Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Wendy Dillard here. Today is Tuesday, March the 6th, 2018, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Your second daily dose of happy for the day. And uh, as I did this morning and even yesterday afternoon, once again, I'm shouting out to my brother. Happy birthday to my brother. Um, because on your birthday, you deserve to be shouted out to a number of times. So happy birthday, Mark. Oh, that's a great nice. Day. Happy birthday, brother. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good day. A good day because of that. And uh, as for the uh, the wind column, I'm not sure what exactly I want to point to today other than the fact that yesterday, I mentioned it actually during this morning's podcast with uh, with Cindy, but yesterday I forgot to mention that we hired a new salesperson. And it's a really good salesperson for, for Louise's gardening business. And we've got two other people that we want to hire as well. It's just a question of getting the cash flow in line. So once we get the cash flow up and running in April and running in a big way with this new sales help, we're going to have the ability to have three paid salespeople on staff. That's just unbelievable. Wow. That's yeah. a big shift from where you were last year. Oh, huge shift. I mean, we were taking hats off of Louise left and right. She's going to be hatless in about three or four months. <laughs> That'll be so nice. <laughs> <laughs> it will be nice. It's going to be great. So, That's quite up. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I can't say I've had a wonderful day in every way. I was telling you before the show about the stuff that's been going on that I didn't like so much. But uh, I'm actually going to not talk about it because I've talked about it too much. I don't want to focus on attracting more of it. So we'll just say it was there and I'm done with it. <laughs> well, good for you. Good for you. Well, I have a really fun, for me, Ooh. update on Project X. Oh, you know, okay. For new listeners, Project X is something where I am deliberately creating something new in my life. And because I kind of recognized I had been living by default even though I've been a master at law of attraction for quite some time, um, I hadn't really set some very specific targets for some new things. So Project X is my new project. Um, I call it that because there's still some uh, necessity around some privacy on, on what Project X is. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as I've been talking from show to show, pretty much every day I get some new insight as to what to do, what to think, how to focus, um, some new understanding. And that has just really carried me with great excitement. Well, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I guess even yesterday, Monday, I felt like I was in the dark night of the soul. Ooh. I not, not, I wasn't depressed or sad, but I was getting zero communication from my interview. Oh, that's what you mean. Oh, I see. Okay. On Project X, which yes. felt really dark to me because I'm like, hey, what's up? I normally get new insight on a daily basis. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I'm doing my normal thing. And every day I'm asking, him, like, are we still on target? And I'd get yes. Is there anything that's required of me? No. So how come we're so silent? Nothing. You know, <laughs> and I'm like... Okay, this is kind of freaking me out because I've been living on this pattern of getting continual guidance. And yes, I will say that the fact I can ask yes, no questions, are we still on track? That is guidance. But I was getting new stuff constantly. So anyway, yesterday I was just kind of in an uh, uncomfortable place. Last night I was working on something and it was just really... Uh, it felt heavy. It felt not fun. It's something that in the past I would just kind of sink my teeth into with great excitement about a project that I really enjoyed doing. But this time I was doing it and I was really not having fun. Hmm. But it was something that needed to get done and I was doing it. But it was like, I'm not having fun with this, not having fun with this. And it was such a stark contrast to other times when I've done this kind of thing. And it was just like, woo, yippee. And so... Today, I was, you know, going about my day and same kind of thing all day long. Everything I touched felt grievous to me. Like, I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to be doing this. And I be, I was to the point I was getting really agitated, mm. almost like I wanted to scream. I yeah. was so, ugh. And I thought, okay, well, this is uncomfortable. I know how to turn this around. This is what I, I'm an expert at. It's turning things around and feeling good. Sure. And I literally got the sense of don't do that. Really? Let yourself feel this. Yeah. Really? Let yourself feel, uh-huh. 
And I'm like, okay. Now, what I know is oftentimes there is great purpose in contrast. And so I was going with it, going, all right, I won't try to turn myself around. I'll lean into the negative feeling. I'll lean into the negative thoughts and just keep asking questions and see if I get some new insight. So I did this most of the day up until like a little after lunchtime. And, oh, I was in such a negative spin. It did not feel comfortable. But I will tell you, I truly felt the guidance was to lean into it and don't try to abort. Interesting. So I got to a certain point, and I felt like I need to be able to verbalize this because I get a lot of insight when I verbalize. So my girlfriend, Keisha, is staying at my house, and I said, hey, Keisha, can we chat for a moment? She said, sure. I said, I need to bounce something off of you. So as I was talking... I, I actually was spinning it into an even deeper negative place, and I was exp- expressing to her that I was feeling like I wasn't supposed to try to bounce out of it yet. Mm. And she's a psychic medium, and um, she reads energy quite easily. And she said, you know, I kind of get the same feeling. I'm really getting kind of like embrace this. And I'm like, well, that's where I'm at, but it sure feels uncomfortable. Mm. And I said, there has to be an understanding for what's going on. And she started getting some insight for me, and we both started getting goosebumps. And where it landed, see, I'm starting to get goosebumps even now as I'm about to talk about it. Where it landed was that, because I said, I am so remembering what I said, uh, I think, at the end of last week, where the momentum on what I have been doing in my life pre-Project X, it has come to a stop. The momentum has fully come to a stop. The train of that old thing has completely turned around, but the train's sitting in the station and it has not yet begun to move toward Project X. And I got that awareness again very clearly. And we both agreed, yep, I'm in the station. The engine is running, but the, en- the engineer has not pulled the lever in order for the train to begin to move forward. And so I'm feeling the anticipation, if you will, of the ending of where I've been, the ending of the journey in the other direction. And I am in the process of moving toward Project X, but it's like there's this building thing. And there's all sorts of energetic, if you will, um, things that are outside of the scene realm that are taking place that are building and expanding Project X. And when Keisha was saying this to me, I was feeling it. I'm like, oh, my God, as you're talking, the feeling of Project X, all of a sudden I get this awareness. Its expansion is like huge from the last time I had awareness of it. See, where I was thinking because I was getting no communication that it was shrinking. But boy, was I wrong because, I mean, I was like in tears as I was feeling the expansion of Project X. And um, then she had this really interesting metaphor I've never considered even just as a human being she said there are certain things when a woman is pregnant because I well, oh I know I said to her I go I feel like I'm at pregnancy three weeks overdue going get this baby out of me <laughs> <laughs> and she said oh my gosh that is what it's like and she said like there's something in a baby who's in a mother's stomach that literally the cells know that it's time to leave the womb and move into a different environment in order to continue to grow and expand. And as she said that, I had such an awareness, that's what's going on. Like Project X is something I'm giving birth to, and the baby or the, the birthing of or Project X, if we consider it like a baby, is turning around in the womb, putting its head in the downward position, ready to go. And it's like, it's all, it's all good. But you know, a a woman who's pregnant, who is long overdue and giving birth is feeling a lot of pain Mm. and a lot of misery. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I was experiencing metaphorically and figuratively and literally, because I was pretty miserable the last couple of days you know, in just everything I touch seems to have some element of frustration for me. But I will say that, like, at the top of, the, you know, when you and I 
start talking before the show, you know, you said, how are you? And I said, improved as of 15 minutes ago. Well, as of really coming into understanding and awareness, the Project X is bigger than ever, even though I can't see it. I was walking up my stairs, and all of a sudden I heard, it's so much bigger than you would have ever imagined. And I just burst out in tears. I had such a knowingness that Project X is something that I literally could not imagine. And I know how I want to feel, and I know I wanted to move away from where I was and do something new that would be very fulfilling and satisfying to me. But, you know, as I've said many times, I've had a hard time putting my finger on what that would be. But today what I get is the universe knows exactly what it looks like, even though I don't. And it is all being prepped for me in such a beautiful, magnificent way. And I feel really solid in, oh, yeah, there's nothing I need to do. It's coming to me. And every time the phone rings or I get an email, I think to myself, was that an opportunity and I missed it? And today I got, there's no way you can miss it. It's going to be so big. You will recognize it. Like all of the heavens will rejoice with you and you will feel it with electrifying vibration. You'll know it when it comes. I'm like, oh, cool. That, so that, that's interesting. Today is March, today is March 6th. Right. And t- this was the first date. Remember I've had. I, I was going to say that. Around. Yeah. <laughs> I had my April 1st date. And then I had a date that was around the first week, and I'd been targeting March 6th. Yep. And all I can tell you is March 6th is not, I'm not doing on March 6th what I thought I would be doing, but what I got in terms of validation about Project X is phenomenal. And as soon as I burst into tears when I got the understanding that this is so much bigger than I would have ever imagined, Boom, all the negativity that I've had all day long and since yesterday vanished in an instant. And I feel great now. So, so take a moment and explain why you think you were being asked to lean so heavily into that negative space. Because you were getting that signal pretty clearly. Well, because while I was leaning into it, I was, I was getting greater insight. I was getting metaphors. I was getting a sense of... Um, Let me say it this way. Because I'm really good at using law of attraction to turn myself around and feel happy much of the time, it also means that sometimes when contrast is available to me for the purpose of giving me really good information, because I go, oh, I don't like that feeling and I know how to get rid of it and pop out of it, sometimes I could miss information. And I felt like I was being asked to lean into it to get more information that was inside of the contrasting experience. And I was. Well, the biggest thing I got was I have outgrown this. Hmm. The stuff that I have been doing in the past when I felt uncomfortable doing something, I kind of like, I'm so tired of doing it. I would just bounce into my, okay, you know what? Everything's always working out for me, and I love blah, 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 and I would just turn myself back into the happy person I am. But what I got from this in a very deep, profound way is I've outgrown where I've been, and I hadn't completely acknowledged how far I've come in my own personal growth and evolution, and it's okay for me to put some things behind me as in, like, I'm done with that because... I've outgrown it. And just like you would not keep a child in clothes that they've outgrown, you give them bigger clothes. Yeah. In the same way, I was keeping myself squelched and confined in some activities that really no longer fit me. And by embracing the negativity today, I felt what it felt like to be in clothes three t- sizes too small. So does this... Because I felt very confined and very uncomfortable and like this does not this does not fit me anymore 
So does this tie into what you were saying uh, the last few days about how you you felt like you needed to do something and you weren't getting any signals to do something and it was frustrating? Is it tying into that? Mm, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. I know what you're asking. Oh, um, like last week, a number of days last week, you were you were saying I, that you were kind of, uh, you know, kind of thrashing around like I got to do something. And you kept saying, kept saying, um, you got the message. No, no, everything's fine. Just wait. And well, I, I'm a no, doer. I, I would say this is a little different. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Last week it was about let go of feeling you have to be doing something. Mm -hmm. This okay. was more about I wasn't getting any new communication, and so I didn't know what to do with that. And then right at the heels of that. I experienced a day and a half of being really frustrated with everything I touched, but everything I touched is part of the door that's closing in my life. Mm -hmm. You know. So, so you, I guess, if we were to summarize it, then you're, you've been going through these little segments of personal growth, in a sense. Personal growth, but also being really conscious of the different stages of this manifestation. Okay. I know I've never been this conscious about it before because I've never tended to a manifestation like this. It's kind of like if you were to plant a seed in the ground and watch, you know, a flower plant grow from a seedling, but all you did was planted it and then left it and then came back two months later while someone else was watering it, you'd come back to a full grown plant. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have really understood all the different process of how it pokes through the ground and, you know, how, how first it starts with a little a thing that jets up and then, you know, the leaves start to grow and all the different stages of a plant maturing before it flowers. That's what I'm doing this time. I'm being very conscious about my manifestation and every step along the way. So you're watching your garden grow. I'm watching my garden grow. Okay. Yeah. And the blooms have not yet even, the buds aren't even on the plant yet. <laughs> but I will say, you know how like a seedling starts to create roots before it actually pops through the soil. And I would say at this point where I'm at in my manifestation process, I've definitely popped through the soil, but what's above the ground doesn't look like much yet. But I have such incredible excitement because when you see it pop through the soil, you know it's there versus when you're just wa watering the dirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know there's a seed under there, but you can't see what it's doing. Now I feel like I've popped through the dirt. That's the train in the station. Um, it, it's not yet go growing into something big where I can see it and know it, but just the fact that it's popped through the soil is exciting to me. So we don't have silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row, but we do have a bud. <laughs> We've got that. <laughs> 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 so it's, it, 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 trust me, where I am now is so different than where I was an hour ago. That's good. Because I was so frustrated an hour ago, and I didn't know what all this meant, and I was just leaning into the contrasting negative uncomfortable feelings because i was being guided to do so and you know i got really joyous um insight while leaning into the negative uncomfortable contrast so essentially what you've been going through is the diametric opposite of the next section that we're doing in the book the law of attraction the basics of the teachings of abraham because the next section is entitled, what about when what felt good now feels bad? In your case, what about what did feel bad now now feels good? <laughs> <laughs> but remember, it did feel good, and then it went bad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good. It, it's like this uh, well, oscillating thing back and forth. <laughs> well, and you know, the last couple of days, you know, we've been talking about the fact that there is good. There is something to be gleaned from all contrast. Contrast is a necessary part of our life. We, we were born into this physical reality with an understanding that we were going to experience contrast and that the contrast was going to give birth to new desires. So contrast is good. And even 
um, Abraham used to, they used to only have a three-step process. Mm -hmm. Now they've added steps four and five, and I can't tell you the distinction between four versus five, but the bottom line is that when you're at the point of four and five, contrast happens. You no longer beat yourself up over it, and you know how to turn it around and get back into feeling good. And so I don't beat myself up when a contrasting experience happens. I do feel the discomfort of it, but I don't beat myself up for it and go, oh, my God, what did I do wrong? Instead, I'm saying, what is, what is its purpose? What is the meaning? What do I want to glean from this? You know, what is it I'm preferring? And I got to tell you, what I got from today's exercise was I prefer not to repeat the stuff that I've outgrown. I don't want to keep trying to squeeze myself into something that no longer fits me. We're going to have to do a show at some point about this five-step process because you've mentioned it before. I, I can't honestly say I've seen it in any of the literature that I've read. So obviously it's a very new concept in terms of what they're presenting. And it does seem to have some nuances there that are really quite relevant to a lot of people. Like, for instance, on the Facebook group that we've, we've been participating in, we see a lot of people who are in that place of, well, stuff's not showing up and blah, 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 blah. And they start complaining and getting upset and so forth. And what you're suggesting here kind of hints at the idea that, that contrast is good. It's not anything to get upset about. And that's something that, that we really need to explore in a big way. So we should do that. By the way, the, uh, the podcast we did yesterday, Victimhood and the Law of Attraction with you, me, and Cindy, has gone over very well. People are, are listening to it in large numbers. And the person whose post led to us doing it in the first place has listened to it and liked what she heard. The only thing that, that kind of threw her a bit is I think she was expecting us to also talk about cases where not just there's, where there's the victim involved, but also the perpetrator's role. And she was under the impression that we were letting the perpetrator off scot-free. Well, in fact, we hadn't actually talked about the perp at all. But nevertheless, right. that was her perception. And I assured her that, uh, uh, no, the, the perp doesn't get off scot-free. The perp is also dealing with law of attraction, too. As he's putting stuff out, he's getting stuff back. So, you know, it's... It, it, it's really a secondary part of, of the problem that we didn't look at, but he's not getting off scot-free. Um, and, and you and I had a little quick discussion before we went online about that and said we should bring it up during the show. So I'm bringing it up now <laughs> because okay. you, you had kind of a slightly different take on it. Well, I mean, what was your take? Well, first of all, explain how it is that you believe that the perpetrator um, will somehow oh, get sure. their Yeah, essentially, <laughs> well, I mean, we are all – subject to the law of attraction. I mean, it operates at every moment of every day with everything that we do. When a perp is, is doing something that is harmful to somebody else, creating pain, basically, they are putting out a, a vibration through their act and through the thoughts leading up to the, that act. And when those thoughts and those, that act produce a certain result, they're going to, to also attract other thoughts and events and activities and experiences and so forth that have a similar vibration to that. So the way I look at it is he can put that out all he wants to, but he's going to get it back in different ways that he didn't necessarily expect because it's not a, a, a true uh, alignment thing where he, he's in perfect alignment, perfect joy, and uh, uh, therefore you know, he, all he's going to get back is joyful stuff. But you proposed the idea, well, perhaps he could be. I mean, you, why don't you explain your viewpoint on it? Okay, well, I'm, I'm always willing to be controversial because I love thought-provoking <laughs> ideas. <laughs> and, um, so, and I do know that I've heard Abraham talk about this, which really got my ears to perk up, because I'll be honest with you, for a long time I believed exactly what you're saying, which is if someone does something that's not nice to someone else, you know, their just rewards will be that somehow something not nice will come back to them. Um. But, you know, when you think in, truly in terms of law of attraction, everything is based on what your vibrational broadcast is. And so I'm using as an example, uh, let's say somebody wants to rob a bank. And <laughs> I, 
I'm laughing already because I'm thinking, what if someone listens to this and then decides to use the strategy I'm going to say? But anyway, here well, what, it is. Why, why don't we just draw a line right there and say, this is not a strategy we recommend. This is hypothetical. <laughs> this is just to explore the, whole, the full piece of it. But we're not recommending that you go out and rob a bank <laughs> or attack innocent children or start wars or you know basically burn up cities or whatever. We're not recommending that. Right. So would that well, provide some place? Know, I mean, I think we all surmise on some level – or at least recognize that there have been bank robberies where they never caught the bank robber. Sure. Okay. Unless Sherlock so, Holmes is around. <laughs> <laughs> but yet there are other bank robberies that the robber is caught and, you know, is sent up the river. Mm-hmm. Well, so what's the difference between the two? So, and I'm going to make this up as a, a scenario, but I'm going to use the principles that we've learned with law of attraction okay. to support this, mm-hmm. which is if a bank robber has been coming up with ideas of how to rob a bank and like they have visions of sugar plums dancing in their head while they're coming up with the how to and they feel totally invincible and totally confident that what they're going to do they're going to get away with i truly believe that if that is as pure a vibration as ever there can be of getting away with something and doing it because they're loving it, I believe that there can be pure alignment with their inner being for joy. Because remember, law of attraction is not a moral compass. It's not moral. And so it doesn't think in terms of bank robbery bad, going to jail bad, getting away with something good. It's just, it just is. So I believe it's very possible for a bank robber to rob a bank if he's in that state of being, if the vibrational broadcast is a pure broadcast of doing something pleasant and joyful and feeling good about it. And I believe that person can get away with it. Hypothetically, I agree with you, but I think there's a little piece that we're kind of skipping past. All right. The piece that I think we're skipping past is that whether something is good or bad is really just an expression of preference. That's one of the key things we've talked about in the past. It isn't that it's inherently good or inherently bad. It's I prefer this, I don't prefer that, I like this, I don't like that. Right. So the bank robber is basically saying, I like taking money that doesn't belong to me. I enjoy that. I think that feels good. And that's what you're arguing for, that he's in perfect alignment with that. He thinks that feels great. Well, not thinks it. It does feel great to him. Yeah, okay. That's fine. So it feels great to him. Well, that tells me he's very likely to get back a situation where somebody steals from him or something similar to that. And if he's truly in alignment, then he's going to say, I love that. Now, that's not the way necessarily somebody else who doesn't like the idea of being stolen from would feel about it. But it would certainly be in alignment with how he feels about it. But he may not have anything that he's vibrating to that has that um, addendum that somebody would take it from, somebody would rob from him. Sure he does. See, because to have something um, the, stolen the, from you, that's vibrating at the other end of the stick. No, the, no not necessarily. It's only vibrating at the end of the uh, end of the stick if it's a lack. But uh, he doesn't see it as a lack. Does he? Okay, I, mean, I, so... I don't see. I don't see how he sees it as a lack. He sees it as all yes, 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 yes. So he's going to get back more of the same. He's going to get more. Of, okay, I mean, la- lack of what? Let, let's. What's the noun that you're talking about? Well, I'm not quite sure what the lack is. I mean, the, the the stick analogy is about thing and lack of thing. And you mentioned the lack, so I'm trying to go with it as well as I can. But I'm not really clear what the lack is. Okay. Well, I'm. I. I don't think I mentioned lack. If I did, I, I'm not quite sure where. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm thinking what his what his positive or what his moving toward thing is being able to um, acquire a lot of money through the vehicle of robbing a bank. So if his focus is on amassing huge amounts of money and he's doing it through the vehicle of robbing a bank, 
but his main focus is on acquiring huge amounts of money, on the other side of the stick would be the lack of huge amounts of money. Well, it'd be also lack of huge amounts of money and without being able to rob a bank. It's, it's not like the, the desire has only one element but not the other element. It has both elements in it. Okay, so maybe the, the second element is rob a bank outside of anybody's awareness. Okay, still has to rob a bank in there, but that's fine. Okay, I mean, it's just a vehicle. In other words, robbing a bank, you and I have a judgment on as wrong or bad. Or not preferred. But, but, or not preferred, but law of attraction doesn't have any moral right. compass. Law right. of attraction doesn't see it in terms of it's good or bad. Right, he, he selects is. it based on he prefers it. Yeah, it's yeah. just a vehicle. Well, if he prefers it, then he also has no objection. If it's a true preference... He also has no objection if somebody does the same thing to him because he likes it. The moment that he says, I like it when I do it, but I don't like it when somebody else does it, is the moment he's contradicted himself. But if he's not focused at all on anyone doing it to him, he doesn't have that as his point of attraction. Sure he does. Things don't always come to us exactly the way we had in mind, mainly because we're not perfect in terms of, of holding our, our self in a perfect place of joy and happiness at all times. We're human, so we, you know, we slip at times. We, we, we react to, why aren't I getting the signals that I'm looking for right when I'm expecting them? So we have little variations that happen. And as those variations happen, we end up getting results that might be slightly different from what we had in mind. You already got that signal with Project X. Project X is coming oh, I bigger, totally agree. bigger than what I'm you had in mind. But it, but it's still, the point is that it's different. Out as, I was throwing this out as a possibility that all perpetrators of things that we call crimes or we call negative is not governed by law of attraction in the same way because law of attraction does not judge. I agree with that. I, I agree with that totally. Where I would take issue, I think, and, and I'm not even sure if we're taking issue here, but if I was going to take issue, it would be with the idea that he could rob the bank without consequences without a follow-up that comes back to essentially bring back to him what he brought to somebody else. So I'm going to play with the word consequence, because now you've taught me what the definition is, mm -hmm. that there is no judgment on the word consequence. Right. Consequence simply means a result. Exactly. So would you uh, consider that somebody who feels really great about acquiring money through robbing a bank... Um, could do so, and whatever results come to him as of him doing that might not even be something that he considers objectionable. Oh, I agree. I'm not saying he's objecting to it, to, to it happening to him. I'm saying that it, that kind of thing could very easily happen to him because it's like vibration. I'm not saying he objects to it. Okay, so what I'm saying is, it is po I believe it is possible for a perpetrator of what we call a crime to not be caught or not have seeming results or consequences that we would think would be appropriate for the crime done. I, I would agree that it's possible for police or FBI to fail to catch, catch up with a criminal, somebody we would call a criminal. Okay. I would disagree that there are no other consequences because that kind of assumes that the only consequence of any measure is where law enforcement is involved. But law of attraction has taught me otherwise. I would agree with that. Yeah. So, and I would also agree that there are results or the ripple effect that happen from every single thing that occurs in life. Um, and whether we call them negative or positive is up to the meaning that we choose to give it. Exactly. I agree with that. Yeah. So some, like, okay, here's a, a minor example. Um, and this is when I was learning about, it actually was under a different name at the time. I was learning it through a different modality. But I was learning about how we're creators of our own reality mm -hmm. and how you believe about something determines the outcome. And like I used to believe that if you drive your car really fast, you'll get pulled over by a policeman. You're certainly at risk of it. But I don't have that same belief anymore because I'm like, there's a lot of people I know that speed that don't get caught. Sure. I used to speed and I'd get caught. 
but I liked speed. So I went, well, if I know it's possible to speed and not get caught, what must I do in order to change that? Well, I haven't had a ticket in 15, 20 years because now I drive at the speed that feels fun for me. And I have a belief that if there is a policeman that's around, he either will not see me or I will be warned of him in advance to slow my speed so as not to get a ticket. Mm -hmm. And I don't spend a lot of time focused on this issue of getting a ticket. But years ago, when I used to get tickets a lot, I used to drive in fear of getting a ticket. Sure. And I got them. Now I don't think about it. And now I feel pretty much invincible. (laughs) <laughs> and I'll be warned <laughs> when there's a cop in the area, I'll be warned. And I have been as in like, I'll get a nudge. Hey, look, there's a cop up there and I'll slow down. And so to me, there's no negative consequence, but what this did is it changed my awareness of how, what I believe about something really does affect the results. Well, th- there's no negative consequence. If you assume that the only negative consequence that can happen is from a cop. Okay, tell me, tell me more. Well, I, one of the difficult things about this kind of thing is trying to follow all the threads because I, if, if I've learned anything where law of attraction is concerned, I am really bad at following all the threads. Every time I think I have a thread figured out, it goes in another direction and I'm wrong. So, <laughs> so I have to throw that out as kind of like a proviso, right? I, no matter what I lay out here, it's probably going to be the wrong path. But I have to lay out some kind of path in order to to give us something to talk about. Otherwise, none of this is worth discussing. (laughs) So you have to kind of take with a grain of salt this path I'm laying out. But let's, for example, assume that you are deliberately uh, speeding, okay? Now, speeding in and of itself is a judgment-based thing. In other words, the, the reason that law exists is that a bunch of people got together and said, well, we don't like it when people go faster than X, so we're going to say, here's the speed limit. Anything above that, we don't like. A few interesting things have happened as a, long, as a result of that. First of all, it turns out almost nobody obeys it. <laughs> there are very, very few people who obey the speed limit. And sure. again, here's something I, I'm not recommending that people do, but I will give you a strategy on how to avoid getting uh, tickets, even if you don't believe in the law of attraction. I call it the runner principle. And it's really, really simple. You just make sure there's a runner out there who's going faster than you are. As long as there's a runner going faster than you are, you're not going to be the target. That's funny. (laughs) It's not only funny, it works. It's really an effective strategy because the cops will always try to pull over the fastest person on the highway. Now, if you see a cop pulling a guy over, don't keep going at your second fastest speed. Slow it down. Because that's what everybody else is doing. You're, you're now the fastest person out there on the highway. But <laughs> the point is, there are things you can do to avoid getting that speeding ticket. However, however, and this is the really important point, just because I avoid the speeding ticket doesn't mean that I've avoided all possible consequences. For instance, and again, this is one of those threads that I'm making up, so it's not guaranteed to work out this way in every case. It's likely not to work out this way. But... Let's say I decide that I'm going to speed, and by speed, I mean I'm going to go faster than everybody else on the, on the highway, and I'm going to use my ability to attract what I want to keep cops from paying any attention to me. So in the scenario you laid out, I'm getting away with it. But at the same token, there's another person out on the highway, and he also wants to be the fastest person out there, and he's getting really pissed at me, a little road rage going on that I'm going faster than he is, and so he starts pulling in front of me. Well, now my desire to be the fastest person out there and not, not you know, get away with it, you know, the cops aren't stopping me, has attracted somebody else into my life who's competing with me and creating with me, we're, we're doing it together, we're creating an unsafe situation. That's a consequence. Now, has it led to an accident? No, I hope it doesn't. I certainly hope it doesn't. But to say that that's not a consequence that comes out of it ignores the fact that it's not just whether the cops give you a ticket. Okay. There are lots of possible consequences that can happen, and I can't begin to label them all. I can't begin to name them all. 
But there are all kinds of, of consequences that can happen in any given situation, and they all have a similar vibration level. So I think we have to kind of assume there's always going to be a consequence. It's just not necessarily the one we had in mind. Or if there's always a result that occurs from everything we do, um, and, and depending on who you are and what you're believing, you could get the exact result that you desire. It's possible. I mean, I don't need to be the fastest person on the road. Neither do I. I just, enjoy, I just enjoy freedom. I, sometimes I love the sound of my engine roaring mm-hmm. and barreling down the highway. Mm-hmm. I find that to be exhilarating. That's mm-hmm. my roller coaster ride. Mm-hmm. Um, I am paying attention to the road surface. I am paying attention to cars around me. I don't do that. I don't speed much when there are lots of cars around me or in heavy traffic. And simultaneously, I'm also, okay, this is controversial too. I'm also leaning in to my inner being and the rush that together we're having in flying down the highway. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I'm not experiencing anything of a negative quality because I'm still feeling joy, love, connection, and happiness. Mm-hmm. So it's all for me. The judgment I place on it, it's all good. Well, it kind of and reminds I don't me. Have any... it, it kind of reminds me of the story of the guy who uh, was so depressed he climbed to the top of a building, and he was debating whether to jump off. And a guy, another guy, comes out and says, you know, tries to talk him out of it. And the guy says, No, I, 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 I don't have anything left to live for. I'm just going to jump. And so the, the guy who tried to talk him out of it just shrugs his shoulders and gives up and goes down to his office and over floors down. And then all of a sudden he looks out the window and he sees the guy falling past him, on, past the window. And he shouts out to him, what do you think of your decision? The guy says, well, pretty good so far. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. He was feeling great. Like, okay, this is a good decision. <laughs> As he's flying through the air straight at the ground <laughs> yeah well so there was a consequence and, and, there well now, and i mean it, it, it was the consequence like, he wanted too he wanted to kill himself but it's still there and again we make killing ourselves or, or somebody committing suicide it's a judgment of course think of that as bad I personally think it is. And I, but, you know. I'm very aware that lots of things that I say, especially to the, in today's show, fly against social norm. <laughs> I get that. But you know what? I don't want to live according to social norm. I want to help people wake up sure. and think. I agree. And if you don't like what I'm saying, that's okay. Ask your inner being what the truth is. I agree. And be led to, led to your own truth. All I'm saying but, is it doesn't end at the fact that you felt good. No, kind of like the. I think uh, yesterday Cindy had just an awesome story about the, the. Was it a farmer who lost his horse, and somebody said, "Oh, oh yeah. you had bad good luck." luck bad luck. Said, who, good luck. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, and each thing that happened as a result of him losing the horse. Oh, then there was a good thing, and then there was a right. bad thing, and then exactly. there was a good thing. Yes, I totally agree that life is a constant flow yeah. of one thing after another because energy is constantly moving there is no such thing as stagnation or being stuck not really we can believe the illusion of stuckness but it's only an illusion Mm -hmm. that everything is really moving absolutely i agree with that totally i think we actually are in agreement here we're just we're looking at it from two different perspectives but it's the same thing yeah i mean years ago i mean i have always been very black and white and I wanted to live in more of a gray world, if you will. Um, by the way, I love gray. That's my favorite uh, neutral color. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't like beige and I don't like white, but I love gray. <laughs> so I'll just call you Charcoal <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> what are you going to call me? Charcoal Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> and my new refrigerator, stainless steel and gray. Ah, I there you go. Okay. For me. <laughs> so... You know, back in the same day, I was learning about being able to speed without being ticketed. Um, uh, My husband and I used to like to go to the movies on the weekends, and oftentimes we'd want to go to two movies. Now, 
I, being very black and white legalistic, felt like the appropriate thing to do is you pay for a ticket, you come out of the movie, you go pay for another ticket, you go to another movie. Well, of course, there are always people that would sneak into movies, but I never felt like I could be one of those people to get away with it because I had such a belief that that was wrong. Mm -hmm. And I knew very well that if I believe it's wrong, I will be caught. Sure. And I have evidence of that in my life where I would try to sneak into something, you know, trying to pull the wool over someone's eyes. And, you know, I'd get caught by some 16 year old <laughs> simply kid and I'd be like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> well, it's See, you're making in my me feel like I, I haven't tried to live so far because I haven't tried that. There's like something wrong with me that I'm not trying to live that way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, in order to know what's black and white, you have to know the limits, right? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> so I like to push the limits. <laughs> so at this point, I went, you know, this to me was a, an experiment. And I had gotten myself to the point where I really believed. Be okay, let me say it this way, kind of like in my bank robber scenario. <laughs> it would be so fun for me to be able to go to two movies in the same day without there being any interruption without anybody looking at me cross, without anybody trying to, like, get me in trouble, and just go from one theater to another and watch two movies. And so I set the intent. I mean, I worked on this for quite a while until I was at a point that I tr truly believed I could do this. I had my strategy planned. I would planned the movies out, and usually the second movie was starting about 20 minutes to 30 minutes after the first one. And my husband and I would come out of the first movie, and I had it all planned out as to where we would linger, and we'd go to the restroom, and, you know, we would look like new patrons heading on into the new movie. And we did that for years and never got caught. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not like the same thing as robbing a bank in terms of uh, bigness, but to me, that proved my own sense of what I believe is to totally governed my circumstances, because I believed I could go to two mo two movies without paying for the second movie and not be caught. Because honestly, after a while, I never even thought of it in terms of it was right or wrong. It was just something fun to do. It's not all that hard to understand either, because you know, fifty years ago, that used to be called a double feature. Right. It was you know that's the same basic concept. The only real difference is that today, there you you were you're taking it without the. Uh, agreement of the movie theater owner but other than exactly. that it's basically the same and i know that even by sharing that story i'm sure i'm risking some people going oh my god she is a lawbreaker and i don't like her okay i, I have a recommendation <laughs> for you though don't do it at amc theaters i've done it at many amc theaters well going forward i mean because amc now has assigned seating <laughs> so you could get yourself in a oh, rather yeah. embarrassing situation where you're sitting in somebody else's seat <laughs> <laughs> it, you know what? If I wanted to do it, I would figure out a strategy. I'm to sure you would. And, I would. and I would do it successfully. I, I just know that. That's just something I've come to know about me. And, and if most, I want something bad enough, I'll figure out a way. Most movies, you could probably get away with it, too, because most movies aren't aren't filled to the brim. The only time I, I can see you might run into a problem is if you know they have an overflow and, and the, the particular showing is sold out. That could be problematic. But I always pick the kinds of movies that that wasn't going to be yeah, the case. So I, I can see how you get away with it. I'm just saying, I'm be careful with AMC. I'm pretty strategic in what I'm doing. <laughs> and, and the whole concept of the movie theater is benign compared to bank robbery. But in law of attraction terms, it's the same. There's also another thing, too, that we're not really touching on. And that is okay. there is a limit. I mean, if, if the whole idea of um, you know getting away with something is about acquiring the money, for instance, with a bank robbery. We're putting a tremendous limit on the law of attraction by saying, well, I just want whatever money I can I can steal from one grab. The law of attraction is capable of delivering much, much more than that to us. So we're putting a limit on and we're putting ourselves at risk to do it. <laughs> it seems a little bit kind of, you know, I don't know, limited? That's the best word I can think of. It's just no. it's like we're holding ourselves back just so that we can have the thrill ride. I don't know. So here's the scenario. Um, think of somebody who grew up in the hood, um, lower socioeconomical environment, where doing things that were against the law was considered quite normal. Mm -hmm. A person who thinks like that might think that the best way to uh, garner a whole bunch of money in one shot is stealing from a bank. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. In I see words, that. You were kind of adding to it like, oh, you're limiting law of attraction as to what you can do. Well, you know what? Maybe some guy from the hood has no idea, but he thinks it would be a thrill to do it. Oh, I'm sure Not that's even true. as much for the money, but just the thrill to get away with it. Possibly. I'm not sure the thrill is still there, but I, I, I can at least conceive of the possibility of it. It seems kind of unlikely to me, but sure. <laughs> you haven't been around enough kids who like are into doing pre- uh, pranks just for the sake of doing it. Oh, no, I have been around or people break- like that. Uh, I, I guess okay. I always presume... You're right. Okay, if, if we're talking about somebody who's currently living there and he's st- currently yeah. growing up there, okay, yeah, I could see that. I thought you were talking I'm about somebody saying, who, a, who came from It's a different mindset. The you know, I thought you were talking um, about somebody who came to from get the hood away with something for the sake of made, trying to get away with it. That's made, a definite mindset that I know a lot of teenagers have. I understand. I thought you were talking about somebody who had grown up in the hood and has since moved out and moved on. And Oh, I think I'll just go, go to it again. I, I didn't really buy into that one. But if you're talking about somebody who's still there, sure, I get that. <laughs> okay. And if all those parameters need to be there for you to understand it, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to me, you're you're exploring the the realms of of like you know craziness, <laughs> and I'm saying, okay, well, I'll try to go there, but uh, oh. you know, there are limits to how far I can go with craziness. <laughs> okay, and I guess to me, it's not crazy at all because people, each individual person, has such a unique and dynamic set of beliefs at any one given time, and they even fluctuate. Um, there's no telling what somebody thinks. There's n- you know, and, oh, and there's agree. no telling how law of attraction is going to respond to something until somebody takes an action and gets a result. I agree. I think that's true. Or takes a non-action yeah. and gets a result. I, I also do believe, though, that regardless of whether one calls it morality or um, right and wrong or anything like that, no matter what you call it, I think there is an element where attraction is concerned that you could call it morality if you wanted to i don't think it's really an accurate way of describing it but it's more just like attracts like so whatever it is regardless of whether you say it's right or it's wrong the more that you attract of it the more you get of it and the more that you are in a position of having to decide whether you like it and whether you don't like it i think ultimately when somebody keeps picking stuff that that the majority of people would find to be wrong and keeps doing it over and over and over again i think it loses its power over time Whereas when it's something that more and more people tend to feel is right, it tends not to do that as much. I, I can't prove that in any way. I can't say, you know, I look at the law of attraction and it shows me that this is the case. This is merely a perception of mine, a perception that says that's, that, that kind of thing doesn't work in the long, long, long run. It become, it's something you can do in, in a relatively medium to short run. But over the long haul, it just gets tiring. It, just, it, it gets to the point where it's just not attractive anymore. So, yeah, I can conceive of somebody, for instance, who's a murderer or, you know, or more practically speaking, a soldier. There are people who go into the military. Yeah, they want to be patriots. Yeah, they want to be heroes. But mainly they want to be soldiers. They want to go kill the enemy. They like that idea. They live for that. Now, I'm not saying every soldier who goes into the military is like that, but there are some people who they just like the idea of killing people who are the enemy. They think that's just and this great. Way, it, it's a legal way for them to get away with Absolutely. acting out. But I'm willing to. I'm also willing to suggest the idea that they do that long enough, and it wanes. It 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 doesn't. It, it's one of those things where the energy that you feel like is coming back to you just doesn't feed you anymore. It's it, it's like an addiction in a sense where you're addicted to the drug, and each further dose gives you less and less of a high. I really think that happens for most people who go in with that kind of attitude. Perhaps not all. I won't say everybody because I can't say I know all cases. But I have this very strong feeling that when somebody goes into a situation with that kind of an attitude, it can't really sustain itself in the long haul. And I have no stories or evidence to the contrary or to the likeness of it. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're out in the far reaches right now. <laughs> that's definitely a, a possibility. But, you know, yesterday's show... We talked about uh, what you were calling a very sensitive subject. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still and think I it would is. Agree. Mm-hmm. I, I think that the most um, sensitive part is blaming somebody who has been hurt by something. Yes. That, to me, in my morality is wrong. Mm-hmm. And that is my, my judgment on that. Sure. Is hurting somebody when they're down yep. is an unkindness. And, you know, I have a very strong value of kindness in my life. And so... You know, to do that would not be kind at all. Um, 
And simultaneously, I also believe that because we are the creators of our reality, that if we really want to understand how we attracted things that we may judge as an atrocity, I think that it's wise to understand how the law of attraction works in terms of what we feel is our point of attraction. What we feel is what we're broadcasting. And what we're broadcasting is the indicator to the law of attraction, which is just a mechanism. It's not a person. It's not a, you're, uh, an entity. It's not a spirit. It's just a mechanism that's a, it's like a computer program, kind of like, okay, if you're broadcasting this, we'll send you more of that thing that you're broadcasting done yeah so the person who's experiencing something really unpleasant you know abuse etc um i think it's a wise thing to understand how that came into um your life i know that for me when i had really horrible abuses happen to me i wanted to understand how that came into my life i think it's empowering i I think it's empowering to know that When I was a child, I wasn't going, hey, how does law of attraction work? No, No. I was devastated. I was hurt. I was mortified by some of the things that happened in my life. But as I've grown up, I've purposely gone back and picked those apart because I wanted to understand what was I thinking? What was I believing? What were my family beliefs? You know, what was going on around me that caused me to be sending those vibrations? And I've been quite amazed at how I did it. Mm. I'm like, hmm. And of course, that's what makes me a teacher today because I've, that's the stuff that I've dissected and investigated because I want to understand how A equals B. I want to know that. I want to know all the components, you know? Sure. It, it's fun for me to understand it, but it's also illuminating and to use your word, powerful mm-hmm. to understand how you've created your own reality. It is. And, and even more so, it's, it's really helpful to know how to avoid the stuff you don't like going forward. Absolutely. I mean, because if, if you don't understand how that is, you do have a tendency to remain a victim. And that's a miserable place to be because now you do feel trapped. But when we under, that's one of the beauties of looking at and understanding and studying and learning about how the law of attraction works, how deliberate creation works, how allowing works, how all this works. Because it gives us the tools we need to make the choices that give us the kind of life we want instead of having to put up with the life we don't want. That's that's Absolutely. all the power that we could ever ask for. Absolutely. And I think I said this in a Facebook post the other day, that sometimes it's easier to understand how law of attraction works by dissecting the things that came into your life that you did not want than it is sometimes to look at something, to dissect something that where you got the results you wanted. Mm-hmm. That's been my experience. I mean, I don't know that that has to be across the board, but um, I think we probably, anybody who's new to law of attraction probably has more negative results that they can think of than positive. Because it's kind of, at least for me, it's kind of interesting that sometimes I forget about the positive stuff that I've created. And yeah, I'm really important. good at remembering the negative stuff. The Isn't that things something? I did not oh. prefer. <laughs> it's just, you know what else is amazing? We're almost done with the show, and we haven't discussed the book. We you haven't know, gotten to I the book of, at all. <laughs> I wasn't even ready to go to the book. I, I kind of knew we were going to just take off and fly. <laughs> yeah, so, so now I have to go. I have to rewrite the headline. I have to rewrite the description. <laughs> well, you know, I, I honestly feel that today's show was brought to you by Law of Attraction's momentum quality. Yes. <laughs> because I think we spun so much energy yesterday. We did. <laughs> that, like, I was on a high at the end of the show. Even though we talked about some really weird stuff, both mm. things that we could judge as both positive or negative. Oh, yeah. It's like, it was such an exciting conversation. Oh, and yeah. I just felt like we were stirring up so much energy that I think today was just a necessity, like a blow-off valve. We just needed to keep going so we could wrap it up. And after the show yesterday, all three of us said the same thing. Wow, that was amazing. We're talking about something that was yeah. a really sensitive topic. We said, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> it, it, and I can't promise you that tomorrow I'll be more subdued, but we'll see. <laughs> oh, well, well, then let's give it a shot. You know, we'll, we'll just wait till tomorrow, and we'll pick up on the chapter, and we'll see what happens. Sound good? Absolutely. I, I'm totally with going for spontaneity. <laughs> and we hope that you join us as well because we couldn't do this without you. So join us again tomorrow here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.